Exactly two months ago, I had made a video on how to build an AI WhatsApp chatbot without needing any sort of code, which helped many of you guys out. But today, I will be showcasing a more streamlined and faster approach in creating various types of AI chatbots within WhatsApp. You may be wondering, what's the point of implementing AI into WhatsApp particularly? Well, there's actually a lot to it. Many businesses operate their customer service solely through WhatsApp. Not just customer service, but many different business operations. And then you have a lot of regular users who just utilize WhatsApp for regular chatting. And this is where AI can be implemented to enhance many of the chat components. But basically for the business aspect, by creating a 24 seven support service with the help of AI, we can provide fully autonomous support to various functionalities. One main reason why an AI chatbot within WhatsApp can streamline business operations is that you can utilize it for booking appointments, order tracking, email transactions, as well as troubleshooting, which would free up human employees from mundane tasks. In essence, it's basically implementing AI to enhance and automate many areas, which is gonna reduce costs, it's gonna increase efficiency, and it's gonna improve productivity. To help us accomplish this goal, we're going to be utilizing an AI automation and AI chatbot creation tool called VectorShift. VectorShift is an amazing, easy to use AI automation platform that requires no code at all. It has a drag and drop UI to help you basically build out AI solutions such as AI search engines, AI assistants, AI agents, chatbots, as well as various other AI automations. I've made multiple videos on this in the past where I automated my emails, Slack channels, and various business operations. Definitely check out those links in the description below because there's full-on tutorials which showcase how you can automate almost anything. But with that thought guys, let's get straight into the video and showcase how you can implement AI into WhatsApp. So now let's get started. What I want you to do is head over to VectorShift's website, which I'll leave a link to in the description below. And I want you to click on the get started button over here. Once you click on this, it'll prompt you to create your account, either with your email address, with a Google account, or with GitHub. So simply just sign up and we'll proceed forward. Once you sign up or log in, you'll then be sent over to the main dashboard of VectorShift. This is where you're going to be able to manage all your chatbots and various AI automations that you can create with VectorShift. You have a marketplace in which you can access ready-made templates to various sorts of creations that could automate basically like a blog post article generator. You have different chatbot templates that you can adopt. And you can see that there's a wide variety of different templates that you can get started with right away. You can upload your own knowledge base, various file types, manage your automations, chatbots, forums, or even voice bots. And the best part is you're going to be able to track all of your different automations or chatbots with the analytics. Now, what I want you guys to do is click on this addition sign, which will prompt open this window where it'll tell you to create various sorts of things. You can create a pipeline from scratch. You can create a knowledge base, chatbots, automations, as well as various evaluations to track your automations. But in this case, we're going to be creating a full on pipeline from scratch. And like we saw in the marketplace, you're going to be able to access these ready-made templates for various sorts of integrations and various sorts of categories like assistance for productivity, for finance and strategy, for your Gmail and so many other options. But let's go ahead and create our pipeline from scratch. Once you click on this button, it will then take you to VectorShift's no code builder, which is a drag and drop builder that will help you in creating your automation or your AI WhatsApp chatbot. Now, last time I did a video on an AI WhatsApp chatbot, I showcased the basics of setting up a chatbot. But this time around, we're going to be going further in depth and making a more easier and streamlined approach to creating this chatbot. It's going to be a bit more intricate, but it's going to be easier than before. Now, what I want you guys to do is start off by placing an input node and an output node for queries to come in and have them outputted. Now, we're going to be creating this AI WhatsApp chatbot for an e-commerce site where I will be showcasing how you can integrate a knowledge base to answer customer queries. Next, I want you to go over to the large language model setting and place in an open AR large language model node. You can choose various providers. In my opinion, OpenAI and Anthropic have the best LMs out there. So you would want to choose between these two. In my opinion, I'm going to be choosing the GPT-4 Omni and I'm going to be giving it a system prompt. Now, like I mentioned, this is going to be an AI chatbot 
for an uh, e-commerce store and it's a clothing e-commerce brand and the, the system prompt that I'm giving the open AI large sanction model load is to classify whether questions is about a product or a pricing when they are being inputted into the chatbot and basically we're going to have it so that there's going to be a logic node a condition node which will process these two different categories pricing and product and this way it will work its way to answering those questions based off the condition now the reason why we have this structure is because imagine we have this data set like a csv that has a table that has listed all the different types of products as well as the prices for these different products the ai actually does a better job in retrieving these answers based off the queries from this table than a knowledge base would which is why we're going to be going through this condition approach and this is why we wanted to root it differently this time around based on the types of questions now to process the question for these queries we're going to be placing in a text node and you can do this within the general tab we're going to simply rename this as the question so from here we're going to then give it a text to describe what this question node is or this text node so i gave it this prompt or i would say this text you receive a product catalog with columns the product id which we see in our data set the product name the product brand the gender price and etc to find the product or similar products use columns product name and description so i'm giving it an instruction or a prompt to basically reference these two categories where it's going to be processing through the question now just note guys it doesn't have to be this intricate you can obviously make it more basic where you just have a simple input node connected to an open ai large language model node which is going to be processing all the queries and you can have a knowledge base which you can go paste in your different files so that it answers questions based off the context that you give it this is a simple flow where you can connect these four nodes together and have it connected with the next step this rough example that i'm showcasing right now is just how you can simply set up all these different nodes to create an ai chatbot that can process queries for an e-commerce store so essentially what will happen is a query will come in about a particular type of question regarding our e-commerce store whether that's related to the product or the price and from here this condition node will basically section off this condition if it is a product it'll go through one of these other nodes and if it is about a general question it'll reference the knowledge base so we can add this condition and we can have it so that if it is not about these two different topics we can then have it go through the next step which is where we told it that i'm unable to answer this question so if it's a general purpose answer or a question we'll have it reference the knowledge base because this is where it does great in terms of answering questions with text whereas if it is about a price or a product it'll reference the next stream which is going to be where it will reference our csv file so now what we're going to be doing is having the input connected to the question and we're going to have it so that this knowledge base for the general query is going to be connected over here now you can create your own knowledge base give it a name in this case we'll name it fitness which is going to be the type of products that we're selling you can uh, enable advanced document retrieval as well as hybrid search and you can simply click on create and you can have it so that you can upload your various file types you can also have different integrations integrated within your knowledge base with various sorts of third-party applications and this is the flexibility that you get with vector shift also the ability to scrape urls and creating and uploading folders next we're going to go place in another large language model node and we're going to be placing in another system prompt for this and the reason why is because it's going to be answering questions for the knowledge base and this node will process all the general types of questions that are asked for our e-commerce store you can see that the job that i gave it is to answer questions using context and the conversation history next i want you to go over to the chat tab and place in a chat memory and you want to basically now configure your prompts to connect all of these nodes the question being inputted it can be linked back to this open ai large language model node which is going to help answer questions by the way to create these different variables you want to click on this button which is to insert variables give it a name and this will basically help you connect all of these various nodes so now the chat memory is going to be linked to the history and the context will be linked to the knowledge base so now that we have finished the first part of our condition which is to answer general questions 
referencing the knowledge base, we can then focus on the next bit, which will answer questions based off the CSV. So what I want you to do is connect these simple nodes, which is to connect the condition to the response. What I want to do is also have queries inflowed into the prompt, which is the open AI large language model node. And we also want it so that this input, which is going to process the condition of products within the CSV, will get processed through this text node. Next, I want you to place in a CSV query loader. This is going to be loading data from our source, which is our CSV file. And I also want you to place in a file node where you can upload your files. So in this case, we can upload this data and it will process through the conditions that we have set. And it's going to then go through and answer questions based off of what we had specified. Now, I also went along and I've connected everything and spaced everything out so it looks a little bit more appealing. Lastly, what you want to do is paste in this merge node. You can go over to the logic tab and place in this merge node, which will basically merge the two flows together. So you can get the response from the OpenAI large language model node connected to this node. And you can also have this node, which comes out of the condition which is the last one that we have from this condition based off the requirements. And you can have that connected and then you can have the CSV uh, query loader connected to the merger. And from here, you can then connect the final bit to the output node. And now you're basically ready to deploy changes. So to test if this is functional, I asked what types of shirts are for men? And you can see that it's gonna reference this product log or our CSV file and it's gonna be giving you answers based off of that log that we have. You can see that it has a description, it showcases the name as well as the brand in certain cases. The next step is to now deploy this within WhatsApp. So now that we have our AI chatbot created, you can then click on export pipeline as a chatbot and you can give this a name, anything you would want. Let's just name it Ecom. Let's click on create chatbot. Now, I know this is not for WhatsApp, but you can basically style this so that you can then export this as a link and you can even have it so that it could be protected with a password. You can integrate it within your website. But now what we're going to be doing is going to integrate this within WhatsApp. The next thing is, is working with Twilo. So now you're going to need to basically create an account with Twilo. It's completely for free. This is a communications API platform that you can access right now and i'll leave a link to this in the description below so that we can basically connect it with whatsapp so once you have created an account we can then proceed forward so after you create an account it will then sent over to this dashboard of twilo you're going to be able to see your account information which is going to show the sid and the authorization token which you're going to need so copy the sid go back into vector shift and paste it in for your auth token go back into twilo copy it and then do the exact same and paste it in now go back into twilo and I want you guys to click on messaging. Now, what you can do is you can try it out and click on send a WhatsApp message. Once you do so, we're gonna be then acknowledging and agreeing based off of the uh, terms and condition, do it at your own discretion, and then you wanna click confirm. Next up is having WhatsApp web or the application itself on your computer opened up. So you wanna make sure that you have it opened up by simply testing it out. And then you wanna head over to sandbox setting. Now, what you're gonna do is get back into VectorShift itself, the main dashboard. And what you're gonna be doing is connecting the API to this URL that we see over here. We're just gonna be placing it in over here. So to do so, you wanna head back into VectorShift's dashboard. You wanna click on the drop down menu and you wanna click on usage. This is where you can head over to the API keys and you can basically generate your own API keys. So after you copy your API key, you want to head back over to this tab within VectorShift and you want to paste it within this area. So you want to make sure that you remove the brackets as well. And then you want to paste in that API key. And then after you want to copy this overall key and you want to go back into Twilo and paste it within this section over here. And then you want to click save. And that's basically it. Now you have an AI WhatsApp chatbot and you're going to basically have it so that it can provide relevant answers based off the context that I gave it. This is just a rough example of what I was able to generate. I asked it, what are some good men's shirts? And it gave me the brand, the product name, the price, as well as the description. And you can see it also provided me a lot more in terms of the different options it has. I definitely recommend that you check out the VectorShift documentation. 
because it is going to showcase how you can export your chatbot further into detail as well as customizing it meaning that you can fill out this form over here to have it so that you can connect your chatbot to an official business profile meaning that it will have a business outlook it won't be the basic below outlook with that logo it would be based off your own logo as well as your own preference and style and that's basically it for today's video guys i hope you enjoyed it and you got some sort of value this is how you can easily integrate ai within whatsapp and this is just the baseline of it there's so much more to it you can add automations within whatsapp you can add appointment senders you can have automations that can fulfill tasks within whatsapp with the help of vectorship so i definitely recommend that you explore this even further so that you get a better idea but that's basically it for today's video. I definitely recommend that you try VectorShift because this is an amazing platform that has automated so many things for me. But that's basically it for today's video, guys. Make sure you take a look at the Patreon so that you can access our private Discord as well as different AI subscriptions for free. Make sure you follow me on Twitter, a great way for you to stay up to date with the latest AI news. And lastly, make sure you guys subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and like this video as well as our previous videos so you can stay up to date with the latest AI news. But with that thought, guys, have an amazing day. Spread positivity, and I'll see you guys fairly shortly. Peace out, fellas.